In this episode of Cycling Tours, I will explore the cycling network within the eastern sector of Sembawang. Hey everybody, Transit Evolution here once again for another episode of Cycling Tours, this time in the eastern side of Sembawang. This video will mainly cover the private estate of Sembawang Springs and the public housing estate of Canberra, forming neighbourhood 1 and part of neighbourhood 3 in the new town of Sembawang. So if you are an Australian viewer trying to find videos on the cycling infrastructure within your national capital, you have come to the wrong place. In Singapore, Canberra is one of the newer public housing estates within the northern region. Construction of built-to-order public housing projects began launching here in 2013, and the first residents of this estate began moving in in 2016. It is so new that a functioning cycling path network was built into the design of the estate, right from the start. I will kickstart this video by looping around the estate using the park connector network built long before the estate's existence, before traversing the cycling paths west of Canberra MRT Station, and then east. Currently on the Yishun Park connector, this segment features a segregated path configuration, with a covered walkway built straight into the clear width of the footpath without any pavement widening sometime in 2021, making it too narrow for pedestrians to use. Needless to say, we will see quite a bit of pedestrians walking on the cycling path portion of the pavement. Looks like I'm off to a terrible start. This is where I reach the intersection of Canberra Link with Sembawang Road where I'll make a right turn into the Canberra Sembawang Park Connector, west of Sembawang Road. The waiting area for pedestrians and cyclists is extremely limited here, despite the huge traffic islands created from the slip lanes, but that is typical of older park connectors built during this era. After all, the park connector was built in 2004. It connects the Yishun Park Connector to Sembawang Road end. Along the way, I will go by a few housing precincts within Sembawang New Town, though this one is encroaching into some areas which I originally intended to address in a future video. Residents living within the precincts of Montreal Dale on my left or Montreal View further ahead will find this track useful to cycle to Sembawang and Canberra MRT stations should they find the bus services 117, 169, 882 or 883 in the vicinity not good enough for them. The housing precincts here go by the name of Montreal, a reference to the largest city within the Quebec province of Canada, which may seem a little random at first glance. But such names are probably a reference to the older streets further north, with names referencing former British colonies like Canada, South Africa and New Zealand, or current British overseas territories like St Helena and Bermuda. These streets would lead to some post-World War II colonial bungalows in the plot of land on my left, which used to be residences for the British naval officers working at Sembawang Naval Base. Speaking of which, it took eight and a half minutes to get here from Canberra MRT Station, comparable to the eight minutes on bus service 169. This is where I approach the intersection of Sembawang Road with Admiralty Road East and Yishun Avenue 8. The latter two originally intended as a semi-expressway running near the northern coast of Singapore. Much as this intersection is unpleasant to be in, it would still be better than what was originally intended for this vicinity, a great separated partial cloverleaf interchange. I 
I shall now travel along this newer stretch of Simpang Kiri Park Connector along Yishun Avenue 8, a recently built road allowing eastbound industrial traffic from Sunoko to bypass Yishun Avenue 2. This park connector starts to diverge from the avenue near Simpang Kiri Bridge, which is built across Sungai Simpang Kiri and merged onto the older track built in 2002. Now along the northern end of the estate, I'll take this time to give a good background on what used to be in the vicinity. Before the 1990s, the area is dotted with coconut and rubber plantations, fruit orchards and farms. But for the most part, it was forest and mangrove swamps. This was until 1987, when an area consisting of Northern Simpang, Northern Yishun and Canberra was cleared and levelled in preparation for Yishun and Simpang new towns. The two tributaries to Sungai Simpang running right through Canberra, Sungai Simpang Kiri and Sungai Simpang Kanan were canalised and I'm travelling along it right now. Canberra was then left untouched for a long time as developmental plans from the 1990s failed to materialise until the mid-2010s. But at least it exists now. Simpang, on the opposite side of this road, has since failed to materialise as a new town and remain as a military training ground to this day. Pardon this minor deviation which I made to follow this big intersection, a necessity for me to return to the park connector on the opposite side of Canberra Way. The southern side of this park connector faces Yishun Industrial Park A, a small industrial estate within the northern part of Yishun New Town. You may think that the naming implies the existence of a Yishun Industrial Park B or C, but that doesn't seem to exist. Unfortunately, the estate is completely segregated from Canberra, so factory workers there will not be able to benefit from the cycling infrastructure of Canberra for their commutes, a shame given the lack of bus services here. But it's good to see that six of the housing precincts in Canberra have a frontage to this linear park created by the park connector. East Creek, East Brook, East Bank, East Delta, East Crown and East Ling Wan at Canberra. Four other precincts are served by another linear park, to be mentioned later in the video. It takes 5 minutes to get to this point from the precinct centre at Eastbrook at Canberra, compared to the 7 minutes on 117 or 883. I'll now travel briefly along Canberra Link as I prepare to cross it, to continue to the newer Sungai Simpang Kanan Park connector on the west side of the road. Confusingly, it continues along the canal that is Sungai Simpang Kiri, with Kiri being left and Kanan being right in Malay. This is a very short segment that was opened in 2021, providing a non-motorist link to Canberra Drive. Strangely near Canberra Drive, there is no barrier freeway to continue along the park connector which means that cyclists will have to dismount and push across the street curbs there. I do not want to do that, so I will just skip that segment of the park connector and travel on the cycling path along Canberra Drive. Now this street is flanked by construction projects on both the left and right at the moment. On my right lies Canberra Vista, a public housing project. And on my left, the water gardens at Canberra and the Commodore, two private housing projects. There are plans for a walking and cycling link between those two projects to Jalan Sandulok at its pedestrian crossing over here. 
for more direct access to Sembawang Shopping Centre, within the Sembawang Springs landed housing estate to the west. But since it doesn't exist, I will have to make do with a long and windy way around. And a tiring route it is indeed, as Canberra Drive goes over some extremely steep hills. Now at the intersection with Canberra Lane, the cycling path switches to the opposite side of Canberra Drive. More condominiums lie within the vicinity of this cycling path, such as the Brownstone to my right, the Visionaire further up ahead, and Canberra Residences fast approaching to my left. The cycling path along Canberra Drive extends along Sembawang Road. Although there's currently a little bit of construction work going on here, where I have to briefly dismount and push. After passing the private housing precinct of the Nautica, I approached Sembawang Shopping Centre, the neighbourhood centre for Sembawang Springs, or neighbourhood tree of Sembawang New Town. The shed path here though is a little questionable and not quite well designed for cyclists, given all the obstacles along the way. It also abruptly ends at a shopping centre. Plans suggest that the path will switch sides near here, at the junction of Sembawang Walk up ahead. I will just say that Sembawang Road is an old road built with many curb cuts from all the roadside developments, and there are even wheelchair inaccessible staircases along the footpath, making cycling impossible any further on. Hence, I shall reverse. Note that opposite this road lies the ongoing public housing project of Sun Sales, an unusually short public housing precinct for its age, made necessary by its proximity to runway 22 of Sembawang Airbase to the southwest with some blocks being as short as six storeys in height. I am now travelling along Canberra Lane, a humble little street with two lanes, an uncommon sight within this housing estate. I will elaborate more about the street design of this town later, but right now I will note that it takes six minutes to cycle from Sembawang Shopping Centre to Canberra MRT Station. There are currently zero direct public transport alternatives to get there from here. You need to take a train to either Sembawang or Yishun, and then hop on a bus again, taking 30 minutes. Even walking would be faster. This is where I cross Canberra Link and make a beeline to the linear park that runs along the rail Sungai Simpang Kanan. It is officially nameless, so I'll give it the name Canberra Canal Link for this video. This is to legitimize these linear parks as routes that many people move through, even though motorized vehicles are not allowed here. I can't help but wonder if the traffic signals here along Canberra Crescent are timed with the one at Canberra Link to ensure that active mobility users do not have to stop. If that is the case, it sure goes a long way to prioritize the travel times of cyclists over car drivers. The linear park is indeed a little narrow, but it sure does provide quick access for public transport commuters to Canberra MRT Station, providing an active alternative for residents to get to the MRT Station when compared to the lackluster bus network here. It also serves six precincts, East Lace, East Link 2, East Lawn, East Wave, East Brook 
and East Bank at Canberra. So quite a significant proportion of the residents here stand to benefit from using this linear path in their commutes. It could take as little as 2 minutes to reach the other end of the estate 500 meters away, and probably a mere 4 minutes to the MRT station. Now, thus far, I've explored mainly the routes reserved for walking and cycling within the Canberra housing estate. However, the estate also comes with a cycling path on one side along every single street, resulting in five cycling routes, each in both the north-south and east-west direction. A very dense network for such a tiny estate, barely one square kilometer in size. I've covered three of each thus far, mainly in the form of shared use paths. The remaining two requires me to travel along the cycling paths that are part of the road reserve, the majority of which were painted in black when the roads were first built, like this one over here. But most of them have since been repainted in red, with the cycling paths swapping positions to be closer to the motor carriageway, given the natural preference of pedestrians to be further away from high-speed motor traffic. I will now travel westbound along Canberra Way, a road parallel to Canberra Canal Link which I travelled earlier. The difference between the two routes is that this one also accommodates high volumes of motor vehicles, with a width of 6 lanes. Crossing the road thus requires pedestrians to cross 7 lanes of vehicular traffic at the traffic lights and 2 slip lanes. This makes Canberra Way a border which discourages walking across the estate, splitting an already small estate into twin. I find it ridiculous how such a road is allowed through the core of residential areas especially given the low volumes of traffic it will see in the foreseeable future. It's not like Simpang Newtown is going to be developed anytime soon. Another thing I would like to remark about crossing each intersection here is the larger than usual amount of space provided to accommodate pedestrians and cyclists to cross an intersection. Pedestrian crossings here have a width of 3 to 5 meters, but such a space will be useless for everyone if they have to congregate on one side of the crossing to press the back button to indicate their wishes to cross the road. To accommodate higher human volumes and minimize conflicts when people from both sides meet in the middle of the road, the back button should always be placed on the left. It would be even better if we do away with back buttons and detect cyclists with detector loops like the glide system used for motor vehicles, or better yet, to always have a green man signal for all signal cycles. After all, the back buttons are only there to minimize delays to cars. I will continue talking about the road design of this estate later. For now, I would like to note this pedestrian overhead bridge that provides great separated access for residents living in East Link 2 at Canberra on the right to East Link 1 on the left, or the new generation neighbourhood centre at the heart of that precinct, Canberra Plaza. Through another overhead bridge, both developments are directly linked to the platform with train services to Marina South Pier as well. At the same time, it is good to see a pedestrian crossing here, since bikes can't go on such bridges. Moreover, while such overhead bridges can improve walkability if integrated into the design of adjacent developments, they also add a third dimension to pathfinding for pedestrians, complicating and confusing things for strangers who are new to the area if the wayfinding signages are poorly designed. Soon, I will approach Canberra Plaza, the neighbourhood centre for Sembawang Neighbourhood 1 which opened at the end of 2020, built by the housing board. This is unlike some recent ones built by private developers, who are known to build them only when the residential population grows large enough to sustain their operations, thus inconveniencing residents in their early years of moving in. This one features an event plaza, pockets of greenery, a river-themed water playground, and a wide range of retail choices, like food courts, restaurants, clinics, enrichment centres and a supermarket. There's hence a good variety of amenities here that better meet not only the commercial needs of residents but community ones as well, by providing a community plaza for events where people can gather and liven up what would otherwise be a sterile neighbourhood. Though at this juncture where I turn into Canberra View, I would like to quickly note that I will not be heading to the park connector across the street. Rather, I will travel on the narrow footpath to make my way to Canberra Crescent, as there's a missing link between the park connector and that street. This fact may not be readily apparent on maps. Now, as I approach Canberra Crescent, I would like to take some time to appreciate the attention to detail by the architects of the two East Link projects on the left. Their facades come with wavy lines that break the monotony and boxiness of the housing blocks. 
This was possible despite the requirement to use precast molds in the manufacturing of building components, which goes to show that productivity need not always go in the way of aesthetics. It sure does contrast favourably with the more typical design of East Crown at Canberra on the right, which looks much more cookie cutter. Now I would like to turn my focus back on the vastly overbuilt street layout of Canberra. When you compare this estate with the older parts of Sembawang to the west, you can sense a significant difference in their road designs. Some of the intersections, like this one here, are huge, demanding longer signal phases and cycle times during off-peak hours, as vehicles and pedestrians take a longer time to cross an intersection. Unfortunately, this means longer waiting time during off-peak hours for pedestrians. Given the presence of these four or six lane roadways expanding into seven or nine lane intersections placed insensitively through the heart of the estate, the walkability around the road network here is terrible. It wasn't supposed to be like this. The original street layout intended for this small estate only had three streets, according to the Sembawang Planning Report from 1996. The first is a short four-lane road at this linear park to my left, connecting the present-day Canberra Crescent to Canberra Lane. The road doesn't exist today. The second is a two-lane street corresponding to today's four-lane wide Canberra Crescent, which I am currently travelling on. The last is another two-lane street from Sembawang Road, running along today's four-lane wide Canberra Street to the present-day intersection of Canberra Way, where it makes a bend and follows what would now be a six-lane Canberra Way, before ending at Canberra Crescent. That's it. The entire road network within the estate, three narrow streets that are easy to walk across, compared to the huge ones we have here today. As you can tell, the end result is that it is now pretty unpleasant for people to walk within the estate as evidenced by the lack of pedestrians along the way. I am now approaching the junction of Canberra Crescent with Canberra Street, and I would like to note that this junction only allows left-in, left-out movements. There exists a staggered informal crossing on the right across Canberra Street, built last year, but I will briefly travel on the footpath so that the entire length of Canberra Street is covered. The roadway I'm now cycling on is named Canberra Street, suggesting that it is meant to be a place where community life happens. But we are clearly not off to a good start. Here, the street is regularly interrupted by access roads into these housing precincts. The one ahead, shared by East Creek and East Brook at Canberra, branches out into three separate directions, so I have to give way to vehicles from four different directions at the same time. With a speed limit of 50 km per hour, Vehicles would turn into the driveway at higher speeds, sometimes even ignoring lane markings. Surely, Canberra Street is an example of what a street would look like for public housing estates. Of course, the street needs to have some street-like characteristics to be called a street, otherwise it is just a road. Over here, I passed by 105 Canberra Street, the precinct centre featuring a healthy variety of shops such as a supermarket, an eating house, a laundromat and a clinic. There are also some other amenities in this dedicated commercial block. Hence, there's quite a number of humans moving about. I'm sure they will feel much safer walking here if some traffic coming and pedestrian priority measures are implemented along this street.
Moving on, I'm now heading towards East Delta at Canberra. The corner block facing the intersection, 126 Canberra Street, is a multi-storey car park which doubles as yet another precinct centre, featuring an eating house, shops and a mini-mart. This segment of Canberra Street is a cul-de-sac of sorts where bus service 883 makes its turn. But it's not a dead end for cyclists, as the ramp leads straight down into Simpang Kiri Park Connector, where I make my journey towards the next street segment. The last cycling path that is yet to be covered in this video is the one on the south side of Canberra Walk, and it is a shared path. There are many sites currently vacant along the street, allowing for infield developments in the future. But I do find it ironic that this four-lane street uses a generic suffix walk in its name. A walk implies a small path that is mainly used by pedestrians, and that is clearly not the case here. There are four lanes for motor traffic, the shared path is not very big, and the speed limit on a motor carriageway is still 50 km per hour. Walking here would still result in rather uncomfortable sights and sounds when compared to the linear park directly south of it. As I approach the left-in left-out junction that leads to Canberra Link, I would like to quickly point out one more precinct centre as part of East Lace at Canberra on my left, 115 Canberra Walk, featuring shops, a food court and a mini-mart yet again. It's good to see a fairly dense provision of shops in this estate. As I travel on this last path segment along Canberra Link, I will give my final thoughts on the cycling network here. The network in Sembawang Springs is fairly sparse, so I will focus on Canberra. It is surely a mind-boggling estate where there is an over-provision of roads. It is not a very dense estate given its proximity to Sembawang Air Base, with building heights tapering downwards the further west you go. At the same time, it does have a very dense cycling network. This goes to show that the goal of making space for cycling is not necessarily a zero-sum game with making space for vehicles. But of course, when you attempt to serve two masters, prioritizing the speed of cars while making room for people, you end up with many points of high-speed conflicts between various road users, making things less safe for all. There are many informal crossings along the way on the red cycling paths within the road reserve, and the traffic lights are less in your favor. Hence, it would be preferable to cycle along the linear parks here, which in most cases is comprehensive enough to get around the estate. With that, I'm fast approaching the end of this episode of Cycling Tours. Do let us know what you think about the cycling network here. Kindly subscribe and hit the notification bell if you have not done so, and feel free to use the super tank functions of YouTube if you like what I'm doing with this video series. Just like that, this is Transit Evolution, signing off.